Hey what's up guys, Alex here, thank you for checking this video and welcome to the episode number 15 of the series of tutorial on how to build a WordPress plugin from scratch. In the previous lesson we saw how to create a sort of cool interface of the settings API in order to tap this class that we generated and uh, use a more modular approach to quickly add administration sections, to quickly add settings and uh, custom fields and all this kind of stuff. Of course in the past lesson we tackled and we handle only the generation of pages. Now we want to generate sub pages because in our administration area I want to create many many sections and basically I want to create all the sections related to the defined list of plugins that we're going to build. So it's going to be pretty organized, we're not going to have everything on the same page. As you may know from the Sunset theme development series, whenever you create some uh, subsection or like sub pages, the first page that you need to create is basically a repetition of the main uh, admin page that you created in the sidebar. That's how WordPress works, unfortunately. Like if we have, for example, the settings, the settings access the options general, and if we click on general, you notice that it doesn't matter if you click on settings or on general, it goes always on options general. It's always the same page. And these two settings and general, unfortunately, these two are not part of the same link. These two actually are two separate links. And in order to generate something like that, that two links go to the same direction, we need to basically repeat everything we already declared in our admin page. So if I was going to use the method of WordPress, I would have to create, for example, a variable called sub pages and then redefine the full list the array with the page title, menu title, everything basically exactly the same. Just the only thing that changes is the parent. So we need to specify the first attribute called the parent slug that is the actual same slug of the menu, but also the sub page has the same slug as the menu slug. So it's kind of a repetition that I don't want to do it. What if we had a super cool uh, section or a super cool method that can allow us to just type something like this? So call the settings, add the pages with a full list, and to these pages, let's add to the first admin page, let's add a method called with sub page. And to the sub page, the only thing that I want to pass is the different title, for example, dashboard. So what if I create something like this? I just simply say, hey, these pages that I'm passing, I want to add to these admin main pages a sub page called dashboard that maintains the same exact declaration of this, but just uses the slug as a parent slug. Let's build this, it's gonna be super awesome. So let's access the settings API, and right after the add pages, let's create something called public function with sub page. I want it to just declare. And here I want to just simply grab or accept string title that by default is null. So if I don't pass anything by default, my method will grab the current title of my plugin or like my main page. So we can also have the option to not pass anything. So the first thing that we want to do, we want to check if the admin page or the admin pages list is not empty. So we are defining, but basically the checking this exact same thing. If this is empty, so if no admin pages was declared, we're gonna just return this. So we're returning the instance of this class so we don't break the method chaining, but we don't do anything. And this approach is basically identical of doing this. If this is not empty, we uh, execute our code, else return this. But this approach is the other way around. Basically, we're executing the code only if the conditions are okay, but I don't like to wrap my code inside an if statement if I can avoid it. In order to avoid it, let's just flip the condition. So if the pages are empty, let's actually stop, return the execution of PHP. If you know in PHP when you write return, basically, 
whatever is after the return is not going to get executed. So we're just returning the instance. And this is a cleaner way of writing conditions instead of using else statements or wrapping a code inside an if statement. You can use the opposite and that's great. So first let's use a um, unique variable called admin page that it's singular and the admin page is going to be the extraction of this list of admin pages maybe with the arrow and not the question mark but I don't want all the admin pages want to just the first one so in array I'm going to extract the first entry of the array I'm going to extract just that one so I have only the first admin page of the full list of arrays and then I can declare a custom variable or like unique variable called sub pages that is going to be actually let's do it all together so pages and it's going to be equal to what I'm doing before basically let's copy uh, the stuff that I was doing here so a uh, multiple array because we deal with multi-dimensional arrays and here instead of rewriting everything we can declare the first one is the parent slug and the parent slug it's actually the admin page menu slug so let's tap this admin page plus menu underscore slug what we declare in our admin the menu slug of our admin page and with the same logic, let's replace all these custom declarations with the reference of what we declare in the admin pages. And of course, based on the WordPress declaration or the WordPress specification, the sub pages don't have icon URL or position because are part of the main admin page that has those things. Now, what I want to do, I want to inject this variable into a um, variable accessible by the class itself so I can handle it and I can do something with this so let's say this variable admin underscore sub pages it's equal to dollar sub pages or actually because this is just one it's just one sub page so it's just a single one and then as usual at the end return this to not break the method chaining the only thing that I have to do here is duplicate this declaration and say hey also we have a sub pages array so now because we have these sub pages I want automatically the script to trigger the generation of the sub pages if we have some sub pages in it and if we have automatically sub page should be attached to the add pages and generated dynamically I don't want to create another method another like add sub pages if I don't have to I want to also use again the add admin menu to dynamically activate the sub pages as well so in order to do that why don't we duplicate this for each and we do exactly the same but instead of the admin menu the add menu page we say add sub menu page that's how WordPress handles the sub pages generation and the good thing about using the same method is that it's triggered by the same action admin menu and WordPress actually works like that with the admin menu you can automatically generate menu pages and sub menu pages so let's do it let's duplicate this for each that basically has pretty much everything we want but instead here we need to loop for every admin sub pages let's maintain the page and then let's say add sub menu page that's the class of WordPress and here of course we need to update the stuff in the same order that we have them here so let's do it so parent slug page title menu title capability menu slug callback and we don't have page icon url and position save it that's perfect let's go back in our backend let's refresh and we have an error undefined index parent slug Settings API on line 36, settings API on line 36, parent slug, admin page, parent slug. Oh, this is a mistake. Sorry. This is not the parent slug. This is the menu slug because the admin page doesn't have a parent slug. The admin page has a menu slug and the parent slug of the sub page has to be identical to the menu slug of the parent page. So sorry about that.
just a little typo. Let's refresh. There you go. Plugin, Alica plugin. I'm doing this just to show you how WordPress deals with these things because right now we are having a double callback. So let's say the initial callback is Alica plugin. And then the second callback is the same admin page callback. So if we do this and we refresh, oops, we don't need <laughs> curly brackets. If we refresh, we're going to have Alicat plugin all the way through because we have the exact same callback. But I showed you that before because WordPress handles the same exact callback twice if we have the same exact callback or if we're using a sub page for an admin menu page, it triggers the same callback twice. But because this is identical and we're using state callback, it just prints it once. And this is going to work if we do a require once or include once for a template when we deal with callback. So no worries about that. We're going to take care of those as well. So again, your question could be, what's all this fuss? This is like an overkill. This is absolutely useless because we wrote all this code and the result is actually completely identical to what we started with, with like nothing changed. We only just write more stuff that is just annoying. You could be right, but you're definitely wrong because right now, if we create another really simple method, for example, let's create another method called public function add sub pages, pass an array of pages. And the only thing that the array of pages does, as usual, injects the pages that we passed inside our class variable admin sub pages, it's equal to the pages that we passed. And then we return this basically identical to what we're doing here to the add pages, we are triggering this return the pages or return the list of pages in this class variable. But here, of course, the admin pages could happen that if the user or the developer uses the with sub page, the admin pages is not empty. So instead of completely replacing it, we should attach it to it or like we should inject merge the array. So let's merge the array by simply say this array merge PHP method, and we need to declare the first array and the other array that we want to merge. So the first array is this admin sub pages, and then we merge it with the pages that we're passing. And this works because these admin sub pages by default, we declare it as an empty array. So the array match will work. If we didn't declare this variable as an empty array, this would have been a non not declare variable, like a completely uh, empty variable that is not an array and the array merge wouldn't work. So let's save this. Let's go back in our administration panel. Let's refresh. No PHP errors. That's fantastic. But why we did this? Why we did this stupid method? Because now what we can do, we can keep extending this after the with sub pages, we can say, hey, add the sub pages and pass these sub pages that I'm going to define right now. So here, let's create or let's duplicate this line because we're lazy. Let's say this is sub pages. And in the construct, let's do exactly the same. Let's declare a bunch of sub pages. And because I'm lazy, I'm going to copy what I wrote here for the sub page thingy. <laughs> Let's copy there. But then the variable is this sub pages. And the sub pages, they have just this declaration. So let's declare, for example, five sub pages all together or four sub pages, whatever sub page we wanna we wanna use. The parent slug needs to be the main page that we wanna use. So in my case, it's Alicad plugin. Let's declare it here. Fantastic. Then the page title needs to be whatever we want. And I wanna call it custom post types. And the menu title, it's actually shorter. I want to use the CPT, just that. Capability is going to be identical to this one. So manage options, because I don't want to give capability access to this page to uh, someone that is not an administrator. And these, I want to give a unique slug. So Alicad 
da 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 underscore cpt and this needs to be unique and the callback function let's copy the function as well here but of course the title is gonna be uh, custom post types manager something like that or let's give it like shorter cpt manager fantastic let's do the same and duplicate this array as many times as you want but just just put in a comma in between arrays and let's build the other pages so okay so the only thing that we had to do here we basically extended this array three times and we integrated a multi-dimensional arrays with three arrays inside and every array is representative of a sub page that we want to generate and to do this we didn't have to repeat this stupid code that is right here add sub menu page and declare the title page title menu title capability we just had to keep filling up an array and automatically our modular code will take care of everything so if we refresh now look what happens now we have alicad that has the same alicad title page and if you click on one it goes on the other fantastic custom post type alicad plugin custom post type goes to cpt manager taxonomies goes to taxonomy manager widgets it goes to widgets manager fantastic and to do that we only had to write a lot of php but i know it sounds terrible but with this settings API class that we're gonna keep extending to deal with all these modular things, we don't have to write an action anymore, an admin menu anymore, we don't have to write an at set menu page anymore. We just have to deal with the array and we can extend the array as many times as we want and it's gonna be fantastic. So here we did a mistake because as I said, I wanted this first page to be called dashboard, not alicat plugin. We're passing the dashboard title to the width subpage class or width subpage method, but we're not using it anywhere. So Let's solve this issue by saying, hey, if we have the menu title, if we have a title, so let's use a shorthand if statement. So if dollar $title exists, so by saying, by writing this, we check if the title is not null and by default, the title is null. So if we don't pass anything, the title is null. If this is not null, let's actually print the title, otherwise, Let's use the admin page menu title. Save it. Let's go back here, refresh, boom, dashboard, because we wrote dashboard. As a test, if we remove dashboard and we just leave with a page, refresh, it goes back to Alicad because it's the page menu title of the parent page. But I want dashboard. Beautiful. Do you like it? From next lesson, we're gonna start adding custom sections, custom options to probably like activate, deactivate classes, activate custom post types, deactivate it all dynamically with custom fields from the settings API. And at that point, you will see how it is important to find the settings API, especially if you compare this tutorial with the sunset theme tutorial, you will see what a huge difference this approach does. So it's pretty much it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up or subscribe to my channel. And if you want, you can spend a couple of minutes on the support me page of my website, where you can find all different ways and methods to support me, support my channel and help me to do better videos and better tutorials for you. Thank you again, guys, and until the next lesson, as usual, happy coding!